Isaiah 40, 31. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Hello, YouTube family, Facebook family, biological family, and friends. Also, hello, new acquaintances. I'm Carol Cortez on assignment, and that's called Mission Possible to bless us all with information, both you and me. Welcome to AHEAD. That's an acronym for Achievers, Happy, Encouraged, Accomplished, and Determined. That's who I am, and I pray and trust that's who you are also. I'm going to be talking today about some wise, smart, mighty, and significant, most noteworthy women that's mentioned in the Bible. So take this journey with me and let me share it with you, okay? So let's start off talking about Eve. Eve was the first female on this planet. And of course, for those of you who know, Adam was her husband. And she's mentioned in the book of Genesis and it tells you a lot about her giving birth to her sons. And then we're gonna move on to Holda. Uh, Holda is a uh, prophetess that is mentioned in the book of Kings. I think it's, uh, let's see what I have here. Uh, Second Kings chapter 22, verse 14 uh, through 20. And she's also mentioned in uh, Chronicles chapter 34 verses 22 to 28 that's Holda she was a prophetess and uh, when the laws the book of the laws uh, were discovered as they were cleaning up the temple as people were cleaning up the temple uh, they didn't know what to do with that book because it had been hidden for so many years and they brought it to Hulda and she explained to them about it and told them to immediately take it to the king. So Hulda was a prophetess. Then we're going to move on to Miriam. Miriam was uh, Moses' sister. Moses that parted the Red Sea and uh, she was considered a prophetess and when the uh, the uh, Hebrew people crossed over the Red Sea. She's mo most noteworthy worthy of the fact that she danced on the shoreline uh, when they got escaped the Egyptian Pharaoh and his soldiers. She danced on the shoreline and had the other women dance on the shoreline also. Moving right along, I'm going to talk to you about Deborah. Deborah was a judge, and she was uh, noteworthy about uh, many judgments that she uh, gave to the people of uh, Judah, and also how she helped a particular king during that time to win the war. Uh, he was uh, afraid to go forward and, and, and fight his adversaries, but she encouraged them and he went to fight the war as long as she came with him. That's significant. Let me share with you about Sarah. Sarah was married to Abraham. Abraham was a very dear person to God's heart. Uh, he was greatly loved and he was very uh, honored by God and God chose him to be the father of a multitude and you really need to read the, in the Bible about that because I'm going to focus on Sarah. Sarah was um, married to him for decades and was unable to conceive a child for him and so even though God had promised her that one day she would be the mother of a multitude she decided to uh, speak with her husband, Abraham, and suggest to him that he sleep with her handmaiden, Hagar. 
Hagar did conceive a child by Abraham and they named that child Ishmael. And Sarah, in her old age, did conceive a child with Abraham and they named him Isaac. Isaac grew up and married and uh, while he was growing up, Abraham became exceedingly wealthy and gained even greater favor from God. And Isaac eventually married Rebecca. Rebecca, in her, in her own way, in her wisdom, because she followed God's lead, uh, she had two children for Isaac, and one of them was named Jacob. Jacob, later on, God renamed him to Israel. And Israel uh, married two sisters amongst also their handmaidens, two handmaidens. But nonetheless, he married Leah first. He was somewhat tricked into marrying Leah. He greatly loved uh, her sister, Rachel. But according to the uh, traditions back in those Old Testament days, this older sister had to be married first, which Jacob was tricked into, but he married her. So along the uh, lines, Jacob, of course, loved Rachel more. And uh, because Leah knew that she was not loved as much, she found herself often, after a while, pleading to God and uh, praying to him and worshiping him for the love that he showed her. But she still wanted, of course, the love from her husband. So Leah ended up having the most children for Israel. And her children mainly make up the most of the children in the uh, tribes, 12 tribes of Israel. The, uh, Rachel did have children. She had two sons and one. She, uh, one was Joseph and Joseph became very um, famous and well known in Egypt. So after Rachel, we're going to talk about Hannah. Hannah was um, married to a gentleman and she found also that she was not able to carry a baby for her husband. And so being uh, unhappy about that, she went to the temple and she prayed to God heavily and asked for him to bless her to have children. And God, she, prayed, she, she went into such a deep prayer and God honored her prayer. And she was able to give birth to her son. And she had committed that she would give that son to the, uh, to the temple for the high priest Eli to raise her son. And she named, and her husband named her son um, Samuel. Samuel became a very well-known and famous prophet. Along with Samuel, she had more children. Uh, and Samuel ended up being, like I said, very instrumental uh, in the uh, kingdom of uh, of, of the uh, Israelites. And then we have Abigail. Abigail was married to a gentleman that uh, wasn't too wise and because of that God allowed him to uh, expire, pass away at an early age. But in the interim, before he passed away, King David had uh, an opportunity to meet Abigail, and he found that she was a very wise woman and a very kind woman and thoughtful. And when her husband passed away, King David remembered her and he took her to be his wife. And she was glad about that, I'm sure. At that point, he wasn't a king yet, but he was transitioning to become a king. And then, um, he found her to be very wise in the decisions that she made. And I really recommend that you uh, look into the scriptures about Abigail and you'll see what, uh, what King David saw in her that made him conclude that she would be an excellent candle candidate to be his wife. And then I'm going to talk about Esther. Esther was a young lady growing up in uh, Persia and 
The story leading up to her is that the king at that time was giving a huge banquet and he wanted to show off his then beautiful wife and he summoned her to, to come so that his guests could see his beautiful wife, uh, but she refused to come. And uh, he was, of course, embarrassed and uh, he consulted with his wise men and they recommended that uh, that it, would, it should not be tolerated for a wife to be so rude and disrespectful uh, and humiliating to the king. So it was decided that the king would get another wife. And so what he did, and I don't recommend that for you men, you know, you please stick with your wife, hang tough, marriage is great. And if you ride the bumps and the bruises, you'll make it. But nonetheless, this was kingdom building time and there was a need for what the king ended up doing. So he sent out a decree that all the beautiful young ladies be brought to the, uh, be selected and brought to the castle and be prepared to come before the king so he could choose a new wife. And amongst them was Esther. Esther, um, along the line, found favor with the king. She was beautiful and she was wise. And so he did marry her. And the king's right-hand man decided that he was going to uh, have uh, the king make a decree to torture and or kill the Hebrews that was living in their land. And he didn't know that Queen Esther was a Hebrew. So Queen Esther's cousin, Mordecai, came to her and told her of this new decree and told her that just because she was living in the past at the castle and because she was the queen, that that dec decree would not come on her. And uh, he just had to notify her, listen, you better think de deeply about this. So Queen Esther asked that he go to the Hebrew people and, and they fast and pray for her and she would do likewise. And eventually uh, Mordecai came back to her and she said that uh, she was going to stand up to the challenge and she was going to speak to the king about this decree in, in, in whatever way she could. And in a famous statement that she made to her cousin Mordecai, she said that she would go before the king. She said, and if I perish, I perish meaning that she was going to trust in God and trust, trust in God's outcome. And she did have favorable circumstances. And so uh, once again, these women just show how they're going deep, praying to God, trusting in God. And we, we should be doing the same thing. So let me go on and tell you about the rest of the women that I have for you. Now I'm going to share with you about Tamar. Tamar was uh, married to one of Judah's sons. Judah was a son of one of the sons of Israel. And Tamar's first husband passed away and she uh, was allowed to marry his brother who displeased God and he was allowed to pass away. And then she was promised to one of Judah's other sons who was very young. And when Judah did not submit his son to Tamar, uh, somewhere along the line, you'll have to read this word, the scripture about that, uh, Judah mistaking her as being a lady of the street uh, laid with her and she became impregnated by Judah, her former father-in-law. And she became impregnated with twins. One, his name is Perez, and the other one is Zera. Now, Perez happens to be in the early genealogy of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, actually, Tamar is one of his great, great, great grandmothers. Jesus Christ's great, great, great grandmother. And then we're going to, I'm going to share with you about someone that many of us know about, uh, and that's Mary. Mary, who um, carried, was impregnated by the Holy Spirit and uh, from God and carried and delivered Jesus Christ, 
the Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior. Also, I want to mention Elizabeth, her cousin. Elizabeth was uh, married to a high priest, and you can read in the uh, Bible about her husband. And not only was she married to a high priest, but she's the mother of John the Baptist, who baptized uh, people and also no noteworthy he baptized Jesus Christ then there was Ma Mary Magdalene Mary Magdalene well, uh, she worshipped Jesus Christ she served him uh, she uh, walked about serving his him and his disciples and she followed Jesus and she was there uh, when this after the stone was rolled away and the, the angels spoke to her about why do you come and seek the living uh, seek the living at a place where there's uh, the dead and they alerted her that Jesus had had risen and so Mary Magdalene and also she had washed the feet of Jesus uh, with her hair uh, and the, the water of her tears because she was so appreciative of him uh, because she had been in such a sin state, sinful state prior to being saved by Christ. Then I'm going to mention to you about the um, the four prophetess daughters of Philip the Evangelist. You'll have to read in the book of Acts about uh, Philip's daughters. Uh, the things that they did so that you can become familiar with, with them if you'd like to. And also I'm going to mention about, I'm going to step back into the Old Testament and mention about the daughters of Zelophehad. Uh, at the time when Moses uh, and Eleazar were giving um, or distributing the properties, the inheritance properties to the different families, the, fam the land went to the males. And it so happened that Zelophehad only had daughters. And the daughters prayed on it and went to Moses and Eleazar and said, our father has no sons. And so we ask that you bless us with our father's inheritance. And when Moses and Ele Eleazar approached the Lord, or pray to the Lord about it, God said the daughters are right. And they were given their inheritance land with stipulations, of course. They were considered prophetess because they were wise enough to go to God and to approach um, Moses and Eleazar. So I wanted to mention those uh, women to you and I hope that I covered them all. They're very noteworthy. Uh, they're a, um, uh, a standard that we all may want to consider. No one thing, God has not stopped talking. And if you appeal to him for your request and you come with a clean heart and you come humbly and not pompous and bogus and hypocritical, he will bless you too. So thank you for checking in with my broadcast. I pray that you were blessed by this information. I ask that you please continue to watch my YouTube channel. I have other prior broadcasts that are pregnant and filled with information. I pray you are encouraged to watch it. So I ask that you please click on subscribe and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let, let me, uh, help me to let YouTube know that there's an audience for this conversation. And if you would, click on like. That you, let me know that you like the information and leave me some comments, some questions, some suggestions. Did I leave out a female prophetess or noteworthy woman that you know about? Put it, put it in the comments so that other people can see it and you can enlighten them along with them reminding me. Also, if you would, please ring the notification bell. You'll see three images will appear. Click on the solid one so that you'll be notified every time when I upload a broadcast and then you can watch it as you, at your leisure. And please, if you would, tell everyone about this YouTube channel. 
tell any and everyone that you can. Listen, if you know this information already for yourself, that's fine. Share it with someone. I'm not saying that I know everything because I don't. I'm not saying that you don't know a lot because I know you probably do. But I am saying that this is a tool that you can use and I encourage you, if you would, please use it. It's only to glorify God. It's my obligation to glorify him. And I pray that you'd be encouraged to do the same with this tool because I know that many, there are many tools available, but I pray that this one is good for you and that you're encouraged to use it. So please, if you would, stay blessed, stay encouraged, and stay connected with me. And I will talk with you real soon. So please, click on subscribe and ring the notification bell. Thank you. There's a book called All the Women in the Bible. I recommend that if you're interested, Go purchase it. It's only about $20 or under $20.